love it. We are going live. Got it. Okay. Good morning, ladies. Let's type in good morning. Good morning, ladies. Welcome to Coffee Talk. All right, we are live. Just typed in my good morning, so you can type yours in so we can just hang out a little bit. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. As you come on, of course, say good morning. Let me know that you are here. Tia, good to see you. Always good to see you. Good morning. I am so grateful that you ladies get up at 7.30 on a Sunday morning and hang out with me. I am truly grateful. Janice, it's good to see you, my friend. Good morning. Thank you, ladies. Wanda, it's good to see you. Angela, always. I am so grateful. I, uh, I think I was telling Janice this last week. I started um, being more grateful to make sure every single day, you know, that I recognize all the goodness in my life and speak it out and write it out. Because I think I've become complacent about being grateful and I say I'm grateful for and it uses the same things, you know, but I'm like, well, there's so much more. So I think I was sharing that with Jan is that I am being more grateful on purpose, being more observant to what's going on in my life and all the things that I have to be grateful, all the things that I have to be grateful for and speaking it out loud. So I'm on this 30 day gratitude, um, not journal, but just being more grateful on purpose. Uh, Katie joined us this morning, Karen, Carolyn, good morning. So I challenge you two ladies to do it with me, you know, be on purpose for 30 days to be grateful. And when I say, say that, um, like I was saying earlier, I had become so complacent, like I'd get up, well, God, thank you for this, this, and it was the same thing. And I have this life and so much more to be grateful for that I wasn't even acknowledging. So now I spend the day being grateful, everything, you know, I'm, I'm paying more attention and I like that. So I'm on this 30 day of gratitude, again, being more grateful speaking it out and being more observant. So I challenge you to do it with me. Um, Pam joined us this morning. Good morning, Pam. How are you? Again, ladies, as you come on, say good morning to me. Let me know that you are there because I love shouting you your name out. And again, just um, I am so grateful that you get up every Sunday morning and hang out with me at 730. Thank you for allowing me to have this platform I am grateful for each and every one of you, and that's why I like calling out your name also, because I truly appreciate you. So good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Sunday morning. Welcome to Coffee Talk. Again, ladies, as you come on, say good morning so that I will know that you are there. What's going on with you? How's your weekend going so far? Yeah, we're into December. Today is the 6th. Um, so I was looking at the dates. So we have 19 days before Christmas and 26 days left before New Year. So as I started thinking about my life um, this year, and I'm like, wow, you know, this is the end of the year. And it, all of a sudden it just came so fast. You know, did, have you experienced the same thing? Like you start thinking about, well, where did the year go? And remember we... Um, we were at different parts of the year where we were on lockdown and some of us are feeling anxiety because we had to sit still for a while and a lot of trials and tribulations that some of us went through as a result of this virus. And here we are now approaching the end of the year. And not only that, um, I haven't been paying that much attention to the news, but I think next year we will have um, a vaccine. So I'm excited about that. Let's see. Uh, Ubon, good morning. Katie said, shout out to gratitude. Woo, yeah, let's start the year being more grateful. Tia, grateful for this platform. And trust me, I'm grateful for you too. So heartfelt uh, thank you to you ladies. 
Uh, Crystal is good to see you. Hope you are feeling better. So ladies, I'm going to go ahead and just get started with five minutes in. I try to wait for at least five minutes to give ladies time to come on, but I'm going to go ahead and get started. So welcome to Coffee Talk. Again, I so appreciate you getting up and joining me this morning. Thank you so much um, for being with me. And again, like I stated, there's 19 days before Christmas, 26 days left before the new year. So for the last few coffee talks, we've been talking about preparing for the new year. And we started off, I think, back in October when um, we talked about do we want things to go back to normal or do we want things to be better than normal? So I went for a jog the other day. And this is how I came about this coffee talk this morning. Cheryl, good morning. It's good to see you. I went for a jog the other day. And what I realized when I got back is during my jog, I experienced so much. You know, I use different skills, different emotions show up. Because at the beginning, when I, before I even go out in the morning, I know that I can complete this jog. Because if I didn't realize that I could do it, if I didn't know that I could do it, I wouldn't even try. So I have this level of confidence before I even walk out the door. I can do this job. Whatever miles or whatever I'm doing, pain at all with the ankle. Yeah, I'm still having pain in the ankle, but I push past it. I know I can do it. But somewhere in the middle, like maybe that, not even the middle, like maybe that first, first mile and a half, it becomes very difficult. And I'm vulnerable. And I'm praying, you know, like, let me get through this. And sometimes it's like, Lord, take the wheel because I'm so determined and I'm going to do it. And then maybe about midway, I, I go into survivor mode. I can do this. I can do this. And I keep pushing forward. And then I get to the point, my turnaround point. And then I'm grateful and I'm celebrating and I'm excited because, yes, you do it. And I'm being thankful. You did it. You did it. You did it. And then coming back, so the other day I was coming back, and the when, I was running towards the when. So I had to use skills um, and my talents to be able to push through. So I found myself putting my head down, you know, and just forcing myself to continue to go forward because the wind was pretty strong at different points because I jog along the lakefront. And so I had to really hunker down doing certain parts of my run coming back, you know, so that I could make it back. And by the time I, get, I got back in the house, I felt relieved and I felt stronger because, yes, I did it. So when I got home, I sat down and I started thinking, and this is what came to my spirit, and this is what I want to talk about today. I want to talk today about who are you and who are you being? Is there a difference? So remember a couple of weeks ago, I said, write down everything that you want to leave behind in 2020 because we want to start 2021 with positive energy. So I started thinking about, and I started doing this, writing down who I am. And then I looked at it and I said, but are you living this person? Are you being this person that's on paper? So who are you? And who are you being? Is there a difference? Now, for me, in certain areas, yeah. I'm like, I am not living this person that I, there's certain areas of my life that I'm not living as to what I put on this paper. So then I started thinking about what are the consequences? So as we move into 2021, especially coming off 2020. Do you want things to go back to normal or do you want things to be better? So look at your life. Simple exercise. Who are you? Put it on paper and just look to see, am I living the life of this person who I say I am? And if not, where's the difference? What areas are different? And then what are the consequences? So think about that. Just think about that for a moment. That's a pretty powerful exercise. 
because it really forces you to take a look at yourself. And if you are not living or being that person you put on paper, it's an opportunity to hold yourself accountable. So what are the consequences? Are you living a life of status quo, but you are yearning inside for more? Are you allowing fear to hold you hostage? That was me for a long time. But you couldn't tell it from looking at me from externally, but internally. Are you wasting time to please other people? And think about this. Do these people represent who you are? And this one is so powerful. Are you comfortable being that person you know you are not supposed to be? I'm going to repeat that one because when I looked at my life in certain areas, I really had to think about this one and, and gave it a lot of thought. Are you comfortable being that person you know you are not supposed to be? So as you think about who you are, write it out on paper. Who are you being? Are there areas in your life that's different from who you say you are to how you're living? And if so, what are the consequences? And think about this, because we've talked about this on Coffee Talk before. Others can impact our lives so much as to how we live. Because so many of us, you know, we grew up being told what to do, how to do it, how to feel, what not to do, who we should be, who we should not be. And when you hear the same messages all the time, it can have such a great impact on your life. So have you allowed others to define you? And if so, how do you feel about that? Are you ready to make changes? Who are you? Who are you being? Is there a difference? And if so, what are the consequences? So as you think about this during the week, this exercise, as you jot down who you are, ask yourself the question, is this person, is this the person I want to be? Am I living the life I want to live? And as we move into 2021, Is this the right time to start making changes? Because a lot happened in 2020, especially for women. We have more uh, female politicians now. You know, the world, part of the world is embracing equality. You know, women are starting um, their voices. Our voices are starting to be heard. You know, we're coming together more collectively. So are you one of these people that's waiting on change to happen because change is happening now. Are you waiting for things to change or are you going to be part of that change? So now is a good time to think about it as we move into next year because next year you have to decide. Well, you don't have to, but you know, it's a good time to make a decision do I want things to go back to normal? Do I want things to be better? Do I want things to change for me? Am I waiting on the world to change or am I going to be part of that change? Do you want more? Now is a great time to start thinking about it. Basic, what do you want to leave behind in 2020? What do you want to bring forward forward into 2021? Who are you? How are you living compared to who you say you are? Is there a difference? And if so, what are the consequences? So I want to share with you something that I use in my coaching. Now, there are different stages of life. And I'm going to share two of them with you because you may recognize that that's the stage that I'm in. Okay, so the two that I'm going to talk about just really briefly is midlife transition. You may have heard me talk about that before. And the other one is leaving a legacy. So let's talk about what happens at 
when you're in midlife transition. Midlife transition, you start questioning everything about your life. Whether or not you've achieved your dreams, you start looking at and reevaluating your values, relationships, and in some cases you may even experience some anxiety because you know there is more. You just haven't figured out what that more looks like yet. So you, and, and as it relates to self-image, you're struggling trying to define and accept yourself. The negative and positive aspects of your life you're taking a look at. Now, you may have had some great accomplishments so far, but deep down, you know there is more to your life, so you're struggling. So you're, you're trying to connect to a more mature sense of yourself because you know there is more. And this, in midlife transition, is when you really start thinking, when you start thinking about my purpose. What is my purpose in life? Again, you've had great accomplishments so far, but now you're starting to look at life differently. What is my purpose? Why am I here? And some of you may be at that stage right now, and that's why I wanted to spend just a few minutes talking about midlife transition. So you start seeking your purpose. You start thinking about, what are my dreams? Some cases, you really start to focus on vision. What is the vision that I have for my life? What do I want? And you're questioning because you are trying to seek what that, you're seeking what that more looks like, but you don't really know what it is. And for the most part, vision, dreams, comes as a result of something that you're passionate about. You know what I mean? Usually, well, let me put it this way, it could come as a result of an experience you had. You may have had an experience. Now, all of a sudden, you see, you recognize that there is a need. And you start focusing on that need. You start thinking about who can I help? How can I help them? What value can I add? So if you're at that point where you're in midlife transition and you're really starting to think about what's next for me, what's more, what's my purpose, look around you. Because you have unique skills and gifts. Think about a need and how can you support or help that need and who can you help and what value will you add? Again, and it's probably going to come from an experience that you've already had. And you will know when you have reached or you will know when um, what that vision is because it becomes a part of you, your mind, your body, and your spirit. It becomes a part of who you are. So if you Right now, I'm looking at your life, who am I, who am I being, and you're struggling because you know there is more, and you're questioning, what's my purpose in my life? Just look around, be conscious. You know, what need, because you, you, you have unique gifts, what need in the world that you can address? Who can you help and how can you help them? And you start thinking about your vision and your vision will drive you to your purpose. So if you're struggling, maybe 2021 is the year that you really start to focus on living your purpose. And as you think about 2021, and moving into next year. If you're not being the person you know you should be, then maybe now is the time to start thinking about being the person you already know you're supposed to be. But you're waiting on everybody else to change. You're waiting on the world to change. But the world need what you have. People need what you have. So that's midlife transition. Here's the thing though, with vision, 
it could be challenging to define your vision because it's a process. It took me a while. But the challenge also is having the courage to live it. So it could be challenging to define it. For me, the bigger courage is once I was able to define my vision, it took more courage to live it. So think about that. And if you're going through this, if you're in, in midlife transition, just know that you're not alone. And that's why I wanted to share. So as you look at your life, who are you? Who are you being? What stage of life are you in? And if you're in midlife transition, all the things that I just talked about is not uncommon. Now, you may need help to move forward and you may not. Because if you do the list, who am I, who am I being? And at the end of the day, you already know. You already know this. Sometimes you just have to give yourself permission to step out of your comfort zone to pursue it. So the challenge is not only defining your vision, but more challenging is living it. So that's midlife transition. The other one is leaving a legacy. You could be at the point in your life of leaving a legacy. You've already resolved the issues in midlife transition, the issues that I just spoke of. You're letting go of the ego and you're accepting yourself as worthwhile. You're, you're accepting your strengths and your weaknesses and you're focusing on what matters. Leaving a legacy, you're living your authentic self. You're at that point. You've come to terms. This is who I am. I'm accepting who I am. And you're focusing on living more authentically. But you're also focused on helping others grow. You're mentoring. You're, become, you're a consultant. So it's really about helping others. So think about it. Are you at a point, midlife transition, leaving a legacy? Who are you? Who are you being? Is there a difference? And if so, what are the consequences? Midlife transition, you're thinking, questioning your life. You're seeking authenticity. Leaving a legacy, you're living your authentic self. So this is a great exercise. I'm still working through it, just so you know. Um, but I thought it would be a great exercise to share with you. As you look at your life, as you move, as we move forward into 2021. Kind of an exercise for you to do some self-analysis. Equally important to hold yourself accountable. You know? Because kind of owe it to yourself to live your best life, to live an amazing life. It may take some work. But you owe it to yourself, especially if you're living the life you know you're not supposed to be living. You know there is more to you. You know you have more to give. You know you have skills and talents to help other people. Yeah, think about it. So you know I have inspirations. There's a couple of them I want to read today really quickly. Um, so if you are in midlife transition, I am reading from page 10, the stage shall pass. We learn and mature as we pass from one stage of life to the next. We tend to reassess and rebalance our values and priorities. However, there may be times we have difficulty transitioning through the stages. Midlife transition is the stage that creates much uncertainty as we begin to question everything about our lives. This questioning and uncertainty can be caused by our thinking that half of our life is over. We may feel confused and like our life is not in order. We begin to look at the choices we made, struggle to define and accept our true self, seek deeper and more authentic connections, reevaluate and restructure our priorities and redefine our values. It is important 
during the stage of life for your continued growth and satisfaction that it, you acknowledge how you feel, experience the pain, and work through any unresolved issues. I'm going to repeat that. It is important during the stage of life for your continued growth and satisfaction that you acknowledge how you feel, experience the pain, and work through any unresolved issues. Focus on what really matters. What unresolved issues, if any, do you need to face and to work through? What is that experience like for you? So think about that. If you're in midlife transition, then the next stage, of course, is leaving a legacy. In that stage, you resolve your issues. You face them, you experience the pain, and you work through them. And you're at the point, you know, you're mentoring and helping other people. You're being kind and generous with your time and just overall. And the last one I want to read from Inspirations for the Soul is the very last message in here and that is no there is more far too often we get caught up in mundane things that are not important compared to the big picture in the scheme of life as a result we can fail to realize there is more which can lead to living a life of status quo as you think about your life and go through the day know there is immeasurable potential within you plans and purposes beyond your wildest dreams get up every morning prepared to experience growth and expect more out of life prioritize and know what's important to you be future focused and have a plan to move forward know that the universe is waiting to give you what you desire there's more for you be present in your life and step into your greatness. What's possible for you? What advice would you give yourself? So as I started this coffee talk this morning, I share with you an experience that I had. And um, which really kind of forced me to sit down and take a look at myself. Who am I being? Who am I and who am I being? So as I just took a piece of paper that I'm still holding on to, writing down who I am, that I'm looking at my life. Is this the person that I'm being? And there are areas that I'm focusing on going forward. Because for me, there is a difference in some areas as to who I said I am, who I say I am, and as to the person that I'm being. And what's really powerful, or what's powerful for me is realizing the consequences. That was, a, that it was and continues to be eye-opening to me, the consequences. So that's Coffee Talk this morning. Who are you? Who are you being? What are the consequences? As we move into 2021, 26 days left, how are you approaching the new year? Do you want things to go back to normal? Do you want things to be better? So that is Coffee Talk, ladies. Um, trying to see if I have any comments. If I do, I can't see them because my computer is not allowing me to. Um, so what do you think, ladies, as you look at your own life? right now and if you did this exercise do you think there would be a difference and are you ready to look at the consequences okay i'm using my phone to see um messages okay i guess not if so i don't see them so um Ladies, thank you so much for joining me this morning. 
I again am so grateful. I was still looking. I don't see any here, so if they are, I just don't see them. So maybe not. That means you ladies are awfully quiet this morning. Pam's on here, and I know she's where's Pam? She's never quiet. So I'm assuming that I put you ladies to sleep this morning because I don't see any comments here unless they're just not showing them to me. But um yeah. You ladies are a little bit too quiet this morning. Are you sleeping on me? What's going on? Um, yeah. Again, I don't see any. So, ladies, whatever you're doing, I not, I'm not going to be here next Saturday. I have to look at the calendar because next I want to definitely want to come back before Christmas. So, next Saturday is the 13th. I will not be here next Saturday. Uh, yeah. But I will be back on the 20th. So whatever you're doing next week, um, be safe. And um, I'd be interested in hearing uh, some of your comments regarding this exercise if you choose to do it, if you notice the difference and how you feel about it. So with that being said, I am not going to hold you any longer. Oh, by the way, I'm putting the link here for Inspirations for the Soul it's a great, uh, some of you have already purchased it. Thank you so much. I appreciate your support. Um, and I'm, um, okay, Pam, now I know you're there. Pam says she's thinking how I will define my normal. Okay. I was like, because I know you always have something to say. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't overlooking any comments. All right. Inspirations for the soul. Thanks to you ladies who've already uh, purchased it. And I would ask that you consider gifting it to someone for the holidays. It'll make a great gift. Again, one of these books you keep by your nightstand. I keep mine there. So, ladies, have a great week. Love and blessings to you and your family. Thank you so much um, for joining me this morning. I will see you back here, I guess, on the... Make sure I get my date right because I don't want you getting up next Sunday looking for me. I will see you back here on the 20th. Have a great week. Again, love and blessings. I appreciate you so much. Have a great day. Bye.